You might have seen some recent headlines and articles like this Reuters article from February 1st entitled, Tesla recalls nearly 54,000 vehicles that may disobey stop signs, or this CNBC article from February 3rd entitled, Tesla recalls over 800,000 vehicles for seatbelt chime problem. However, despite all the articles and all the headlines, these two recalls are actually quite minor and really aren't that much of a big deal. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the real story behind these two recalls and also a few other recalls using the 2021 Tesla Model Y as our example. So far, there have been eight recalls reported by the NHTSA for the 2021 Tesla Model Y. And while this may seem like a large number of recalls, as far as I can tell, all of the major auto manufacturers, even those who are known for excellent manufacturing standards like Toyota, have issued a number of recalls over the years because no manufacturer is perfect. Now, when it comes to the individual recalls for the 2021 Tesla Model Y, if you go to the NHTSA website, you can see right now that they list eight recalls for this vehicle, dealing with seatbelt chimes, the vehicle not stopping at a stop sign, suspension knuckles fracturing, automatic emergency braking issues, a front suspension issue, two seatbelt issues, and also an issue with loose brake caliper bolts. For comparison, the 2020 Toyota RAV4 has had five recalls, including some airbag issues, a fuel pump issue, a suspension issue, and also an engine coolant leak. Then you have the 2021 BMW X5, which has had 11 recalls. The 2021 VW ID4 has had four recalls. And in another example, the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E has also had four recalls. Now we're about to dive into the details of each one of these, but I think it's really important to note that recalls like this are not necessarily unique to Tesla. And as we dive into these recalls, a number of these recalls, some people would argue, may not even merit the word recall being attached to them. For instance, three of these eight Tesla Model Y recalls only required a simple over-the-air software update to fix them. And of those three software-related recalls, two of the software-related recalls only applied to those with full self-driving beta software. So if you remove the simple software-related recalls, that leaves us with five mechanical issues that were recalled for the Tesla Model Y, much more in line with the average SUVs that I just mentioned. So with that being said, let's dive into the details of each one of these eight recalls for the 2021 Tesla Model Y. The most recent recall for the 2021 Tesla Model Y is entitled Seatbelt Chime May Not Activate. This recall affects over 817 thousand vehicles. And according to the NHTSA summary quote, the audible chime may not activate when the vehicle starts and the driver has not buckled their seatbelt. When you dive further into the details and you read the NHTSA's 573 safety recall report, you get more details like, for instance, this issue is only noticed when, quote, if the drive cycle state changes, example, the driver exits the vehicle during this reminder, talking about the seatbelt chime reminder, the software erroneously stays in the state where it has already warned the driver and does not reset its state to prepare for the next warning. Therefore, the next time the vehicle is started without the driver buckling their seatbelt first, the driver is not warned by the chime, but instead only receives the accompanying visual telltale. And of course, this will be fixed with a very simple over-the-air software update and Tesla owners will not have to take their vehicle anywhere at all. So while this is an issue that needs to be fixed, it's really not as bad as it may seem from a surface level. The second most recent recall is also software related and it has to do with the full self-driving beta software. This recall relates to the rolling stop functionality that is available as a part of Tesla's full self-driving beta software, which if the Tesla driver sets the vehicle to the proper mode, it may not stop at stop signs, but do kind of a California roll through that stop sign. If you once again pull up the 573 safety recall report from the NHTSA, it mentions the following conditions for the vehicle to be able to roll through a stop sign. First of all, the functionality must be enabled with the full self-driving beta profile settings, meaning the driver has to actually choose this setting. And second of all, the vehicle must be approaching an all-way stop intersection 
And third of all, the vehicle must be traveling below 5.6 miles per hour. And fourth of all, no relevant moving cars can be detected near the intersection. And also no relevant pedestrians or bicycles are detected near the intersection. There has to be sufficient visibility for the vehicle while approaching the intersection. And all roads entering the intersection need to have a speed limit of 30 miles per hour or less. When all of those conditions are met, once again, the driver has to put this setting in from the beginning, but once all those conditions are met, the Tesla vehicle may roll through a stop sign. Now, I'm not an advocate for rolling through stop signs. However, I do think it's important to note that this is a feature that Tesla built in that had to be chosen by the driver specifically. And I'm actually for this functionality being turned off because I think it could be an issue. And obviously it is against the law, so it shouldn't be built in to the Tesla software. But once again, it had to be chosen by the driver and it only applies to the beta software, which is in a limited number of people's hands right now. And once again, for Tesla to fix this, they just need to push out a simple over the air software update. The third recall I want to mention for the 2021 Tesla Model Y might actually be the most serious recall, and it has to do with suspension knuckles that may fracture. Thankfully, this issue only potentially affects around 826 Tesla Model Ys, and Tesla service can easily replace the knuckles as necessary on these vehicles. I found it interesting in the NHTSA 573 safety recall report that they had a little bit of a chronology of how this was reported and found out through Tesla. And they mentioned in September of 2021, they noticed some deformed knuckles at the production lines at Tesla's Shanghai Gigafactory. When that was found, Tesla and the parts supplier immediately performed hardness checks on all the other knuckles in their inventory and rejected those with a low hardness. Then over the next several months, they did a number of tests. And in mid-November, they finally made a recall determination. And it's important to note that Tesla is not aware of any injury, warranty claims, or customer complaints related to the condition. So this particular recall was more of a proactive recall. And once again, it only affected a small number of vehicles. It's important that it's fixed and it is a pretty serious recall. But once again, Tesla proactively went after this recall and it should be addressed by now. The next recall that I want to talk about is once again a software related recall and also only applies to those who were in the full self-driving beta program at this time. For those who were in the full self-driving beta program, when they were running operating software version 2021.36.5.2, there was an issue found that caused a false forward collision warning, which could activate the automatic emergency braking when it was unnecessary. Of course, when this issue was detected, Tesla quickly sent a new over-the-air software update to the full self-driving beta vehicles, and this was fixed really quickly. The next recall that I wanna talk about had to do with the suspension system. In this particular October of 2021 recall, the Tesla Model Y front suspension lateral link had an issue that could cause it to separate. This recall affected just a little bit under 2,800 vehicles, and those vehicles comprised a mix of the Model Y and the Model 3. According to the NHTSA's 573 recall report, once again, if we look at the chronology of this, in June of 2021, Tesla had accumulated around 39 service repairs related to the lateral link fasteners that were found either loose or missing. Tesla, of course, then went and started looking at their records. And the remedy is that Tesla service can simply inspect the affected vehicles and make sure that the fasteners on this particular suspension component have the proper torque. And if any of those fasteners are loose or missing, they can simply replace those and retorque them. In addition, when it comes to the manufacturing end, this 573 report from the NHTSA mentions that Tesla also identified and put some processes into place that should stop this from happening to any future vehicles. The next recall that I'd like to mention has to do with the front seat belts not being securely attached to the B pillar. And this recall happened in May of 2021. This recall is estimated to affect somewhere a little bit over 5,500 vehicles, including Model 3 and Model Y vehicles. And it had to do with the fasteners that secure the front seat shoulder belt to the B pillar not being properly attached sometimes. Once again, in the 573 safety recall report from the NHTSA, this issue was noticed in March for a 2021 Model Y by Tesla Service, which initiated the factory quality team to do some research, and this allowed Tesla to find the root cause and fix the problem. 
The next recall was related, but it had to do with the back seat seatbelt retractors not being securely attached because of the same issue with the fasteners maybe not being torqued down or properly installed. Once again, the Tesla service team found this issue and with their research, they were able to fix the problem both on the service side and also on the manufacturing side. The last of the recalls that I wanna mention had to do with loose brake caliper bolts and this was also reported in May of 2021. This recall affected just under 6,000 Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys, and once again had to do with loose bolts, but this time on the brake calipers. This was first noticed by Tesla in December of 2020, and over the next few subsequent months, they were able to determine the root cause and implement a simple fix for the service team, and also make some changes to the production process and hopefully eliminate this from happening in future vehicles. So once again, in summary, as you can see on this chart, note that of the eight Tesla Model Y recalls, only one of the recalls involved an actual part being defective, the suspension knuckle. And once again, three of the eight recalls were fixed with a simple software update, two of which were only related to those with the full self-driving beta software. And the remaining four recalls had to do with bolts or fasteners not being properly torqued down or attached properly. Now, once again, I thought it was important that we dove into the specific details for these recalls so we can have a better understanding of each of them, several of them really being very minor. I'm not trying to excuse these recalls or imply that a few of them were not somewhat serious issues. However, I hope that you see as I tried to show in this video that other established automakers often had very similar recalls and issues like this are not necessarily unique to Tesla. In the end, Tesla's electric vehicles are some of the safest vehicles that you can purchase and some of the best engineered vehicles as well. Do let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your opinion on the Tesla Model Y, Tesla in general, and your opinion on these recalls. Once again, I would like to remind you that the 2022 Electric SUV Buyer's Guide is now available in an instant downloadable digital magazine format that you can purchase at cleanerwatt.com. And it covers around 29 electric SUVs, those that are available in 2022, and also some previews of those that will be available in 2023 and 2024. And it includes over 60 pages of content. You can find out more and purchase your copy at cleanerwatt.com. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.